Chapter 1 to 2. Today was a decent day, I say in my head as I get ready to get in the covers before bed, woke up at a good time, ate breakfast, didn't have a shitty day at work and even got to catch up on some shows now fully submerged in the covers I let out a sigh. Too bad I'm 20 years old and still not in college despite the fact I've already taken 3 years off another sigh escapes my mouth as sleep slowly starts to overtake me. My eyelids slowly open as I find myself sitting in a chair in some dark purple void with floating motes of light, a black and white checkered floor with a light only illuminating where I was sitting, where am I? Guess I'm having another one of my weird dreams, I wonder where this one is going to go. Slowly my eyes start drifting over the place trying to figure out what's going on when my eyes suddenly catch someone sitting in front of me. It was a fairly young woman who looked to be a few years younger than me with blue hair that had a curl on top with some kind of gem in it, she's wearing some kind of blue vest and skirt outlined in white with a green ribbon, blue boots and white with yellow arm sleeves. Michael Zangro, she begins to speak, welcome to the afterlife. Unfortunately you have passed away in your sleep a few moments ago, I slowly look at her with a slightly unamused face thinking that it's already starting off to be a weird dream. Your life was a fairly short one, she continues, but you are, in fact, dead. I died in my sleep. I respond and she gives a slight nod, how did I just straight die? I continue to play along with this dream, I worked out every second day, ate somewhat healthy and didn't really have any health problems, wonder what's going to happen next. She flips open a book that she took from a small table that appeared next to her and schemes through it, it looks like your heart just stopped beating, ha kind of pathetic, she mumbles the last part to herself. But it has happened before. I continue to look at her a little confused but try to keep a level head, and how do I know this is real and I'm not just dreaming, this dream was starting to feel off, somehow I started to feel uneasy but the rational part of my brain was just telling me this is a dream. She sighs as she tosses me a book and I catch it wondering what she wants me to do with it, you can't usually read in a dream, right or feel pain right? I looked down at the book and I started to read about how I died in my sleep just like she said, now try writing and poking yourself, a pencil gets tossed at me as I try writing out my name which I was able to do which started to freak me out a bit. I can never write in my dreams, what is going on? I then poke my arm with the pencil and I jerk slightly as it actually kind of hurt. Okay, I'm officially starting to freak out a little bit. I look up to the girl in front of me to ask what the hell is going on, only to find her eating what looked like to be chips as she had a bored expression on her face. She noticed I was looking at her with slight panic in my eyes when she let out a sigh. It's starting to sink in now, good, now we can get down to business, she continues without too much of a care, my name is Aqua I'm a goddess who sends people who have died to heaven or to be reborn with no memory of their previous life. I personally wouldn't choose heaven, you don't have a body really, there's nothing but clouds and you do nothing all day. That does sound boring but also how I pictured it. But, she raises a finger and looks at me with a smirk, you're in luck. There's also a third option. You can choose to be sent to another world where you can have an awesome power and try to defeat the demon king. Now what do you say? What about my family? My dog, my job and friends. They'll discover your body in the morning and let all your real life and online friends know. Now you're going to need to pick soon I don't have all day, now she's starting to look irritated about how long I'm taking. I guess I'll choose the new world option, I slump into my chair feeling defeated. Great, she claps her hands and a bunch of cards appear on the floor before me, you can pick anything you see from these cards as your new ability. I proceed to get on the floor examining the cards one by one, one hit sword, ability to create anything, one hit axe, unlimited magic, one hit lance, ability to create and control earth, fire, water or wind, one hit glaive. This all seems really basic and not too practical, bringing my hand to my chin, most of it is one hit weapons or a magic ability that could easily be taken advantage of, especially if I lose the weapon or it gets stolen. Have you made your decision yet? You don't have much time left. She's getting really impatient, I should probably pick soon but other than having the ability to create anything I don't really like the options a light bulb then goes off in my head, I have a question. What? Can I become someone? Become someone? Yeah I have the looks and abilities of a real life or fictional character. She seems to think for a moment then responds, yeah it should be fine. You have someone in mind? If I can become anyone with an inherent ability of theirs I could become someone like Goku but I'd probably cause more damage than actually help people, and I don't want to be a vampire or something unless it's a Skyrim vampire and I don't die in the sun instantly, but then again if I'm found out I'll be killed, but then it hit me, again, what about someone from fate? If I became Merlin or something I could become an awesome mage plus I'm playing him in a DND campaign. But he is an incubus and I don't know if people will like those in this new world. But what about Gilgamesh? 
Sure he's OP as hell but I'd probably have to build up a treasury and he has amazing luck plus Turok on YouTube did a build about him so I can have those stats and racial traits but with the gate of Babylon. I look up at Aqua and say, I've made my decision, she looks at me and leans forward a bit, I want to become Archer Gilgamesh from the Fate series and be able to use the Gate of Babylon and have the racial traits and abilities as him as well as his stats in Turok the Barbarian's DND YouTube video. Aqua seems confused but she lets out a sigh, fine just get out of here, she snaps her finger and a light surrounds me as I get slowly lifted into the air and then suddenly disappear off to a new life in a new world. The Town of Beginning Adventures, Axel. When I opened my eyes after being sent off by Aqua I was expecting to wake up in my bed and continue on with my boring life. But what graced my eyes and ears was the sound of rushing water in a small stream, birds chirping and the hustle and bustle of townspeople going about their day. It actually happened. I got ice skate. I turned my head to the side to look at more things when I heard clinking. Looking down I saw myself wearing gold armor with black design slash markings all over it and a red sash under the cuirass. Holy shit this stuff is shiny, walking across the street I was on towards the stream that I heard, I could tell my armor was garnering attention. Ha! Huh. Let them bask in my glory, wait, why did I think that? I shrugged it off and looked at the stream to see spiked golden hair, red eyes, and gold earrings. My god it worked I'm freaking Gilgamesh. I smirked and stood up looking around, should probably find a guild or something and get this party started looking around for a moment a lady who seemed to be around her 30s was walking near me. You, I point to her, oof that was a little forceful. Huh, she jumped slightly and looked at me, yes. Should probably tone down the kingly attitude, direct me to the nearest guild please. Oh an adventurer. Sure just cross this little bridge over the stream and keep heading straight, she said with a small smile. I thanked her and proceeded towards the guild, adventures are common, good this'll make things easier, after making my way to the guild I started to form a plan, I need to test the extents of my supposed gate but first I'll probably have to register and take a quest. Gotta make money too so I can get a place to live and start to fill up my treasury with weapons plus not sleep on the streets. Someone as grand as me shouldn't have to, there it is again, Now after about another minute of walking I noticed a building to my right that seemed to be the adventurer's guild. Standing in front of the door I let out a breath, no time like the present, as the door was pushed open the first thought that went through my head was, yup definitely a classic fantasy guild, there were people of all shapes and sizes wearing various clothes and armor with various tools and weapons. People were drinking and having fun at a bar and eating food while chatting about old times and their most recent adventures of slaying some beast. A few people turned to look at me and seemed to be drawn to the magnificent gold armor I was wearing. Letting my eyes wander for a time I eventually saw what looked to be a front desk with people behind these small cages writing down stuff on paper. That's got to be where I register. Walking up to the nearest person who was a blonde-haired woman with gold eyes and her hair tied in a sort of ponytail with a large bust and a revealing white receptionist uniform. She looked up from her paperwork and said, oh. Hello there welcome to the Adventurers Guild my name is Luna how may I help you? I'm looking to register. Fantastic. I just need you to pay the small fee and we can get started. Shit I need money. I did say to start off essentially as a DND character plus Gilgamesh has extraordinary luck so maybe I was given some gold or whatever the currency is in this world, I closed my eyes in concentration to see if I could search my gate for any money. The gate was barren to say the least but when I thought of gold I immediately found a small pouch, yes. Now to open a gate and drop it. That should be easy right? After a moment a small gold portal opened above the desk slightly startling Luna and garnering the attention of a fair amount of people. From within the portal a dark brown pouch dropped onto the desk once again shocking Luna a bit but also her eyes stared in wonder. Will the money in there suffice? I'll just take a look, cautiously she opens the pouch and finds a few handfuls of coins inside, yes I just need a few Eris and will be set. Fantastic, so Eris is the name of money here. By now a few people seemed to be drawing closer wondering who I was and what would become of my registration. I just need you to fill out this form first, she hands me a pen and a registration form. Okay so name first. Should I use my real name? Na new life new me, I write Gilgamesh, wait. About 150 pounds out of armor. Height, I think 5 feet 10 inches. And the rest seems to be basic info about myself once finished I handed the form in which she glanced over then pointed me towards some contraption. This device here will measure your magic and get your stats to put on your adventurer card where you can put skill points in when you level up, Luna said. This seemed pretty basic and borderline RPG even for a fantasy world. Putting my hand onto the crystal it started to glow bright and now the whole guild was watching as it shot a beam onto some card and seemed to be writing stuff down on it. 
Once it finished the glow died down and Luna grabbed the card to examine it. Oh wow, she exclaimed, almost all your stats are fairly above average including your luck which is practically off the charts plus your mana and charisma are very high. Your strength isn't anything to scoff at either, now everyone was interested and I gave a light chuckle. Of course I expected nothing less, grinning smugly I said, again, that tone is concerning, don't want to pick up too much of Gil's attitude. Now all that remains is the class you want to be, on your card you can choose your class as well as distribute some skill points since you started off with fairly amazing stats. You can probably pick a few of the high tier classes as well. Hmm. I hum as I glance at the card, what class should I be? I think I'll go with something more magical since magic should be vast. But I should either multi-class so I can learn close quarters skills to be able to fight if I ever do run out of magic, is there a spells word class? I'd like to learn magic as well as some close quarters skills. Why yes there is, you can choose a warlock, but there aren't many things you can learn in terms of sword skills since it's more magic based or you can multi-class between something like a knight and a sorcerer but most people don't do that. Hmm, the only reason to multi-classing for this as a DND character was to gain heavy armor proficiency which I seem to have and things like divine sense but I don't know if I have all of that yet. I'll probably go warlock and learn spells from there for now and see what happens. I'll choose a warlock for now and decide what I should do later. Great. Now you're all set. You can stay here for a bit to distribute some points and if you want to learn a new skill not on the list you can ask around and have someone teach you. The quest board is by the entrance and the blacksmith is right across the street so you can gear up for a quest. Just make sure to bring the quest here first, I would personally recommend the toad quest to get started. She then smiled at me as I walked toward an empty table trying to avoid the stairs of the other adventures. I sat down then looked at my card, the list of skills were pretty basic to choose from such as faster mana regen or a slight boost in damage as well as boosting basic stats. Using the few skill points I had I chose to not spend all of them but I did have over 10 points. I'll grab a mana regen skill and put some points in that since I don't know how much my gate will cost. I'll put a few points into agility since this armor is heavy and I have the strength to wear it but I'm slower regardless of that. And we'll end off with a basic spell I can learn automatically. I'll choose a basic fire bolt spell. I have 5 points left so I'll wait and save them for new skills. Getting up from my table I walked to quest board and almost immediately found the toad quest and it read as follows. The giant toad mating season is upon us, will reward 1000 eris per toad killed and depending on the amount killed in a certain time a bonus of 2000 eris may be given. It then gave some basic info on the toads such as a small resistance to magic and that bladed weapons would be more effective. I showed the quest to Luna then left to prepare. Plains of Axel quest, kill giant toads. After walking out of Axel into the plains I immediately saw about 6 to 8 toads hopping around. Man those things are ugly, now let's test out the gate. Before arriving at the field I went to the blacksmith and bought a few weapons with my remaining money. And thanks to my high charisma I was able to barter and purchase one long sword, two short swords, a spear and a halberd. The man laughed thinking I wouldn't be able to carry them but once they went through a golden portal he seemed impressed as well as shocked. After that I went straight to the plains to begin experimenting. One thing about the toads is that they hate metal so they'd ignore me due to my armor so this may become difficult if they run away. About 60 feet away a blue giant toad was hopping along on the lookout for a mate. Perfect, my smile turned predatory as three golden portals opened slightly behind and above me. A long sword, one short sword and the halberd I purchase appeared from the gates. Now focus and let's test my aim, I mentally commanded the short sword to fire out and it shot at an incredible speed but just barely nicked the toad's stomach. Chal right let's try again, the toad was now on high alert and attempted to rush me but as it drew in close I fired the long sword and it pierced the head of the creature and it fell dead within a few seconds. I breathed out a sigh as the two weapons I fired turned into motes of golden light and returned to my gate's inventory. I've only fired two weapons and I barely feel a drain on my mana so this should be easy, I said aloud and turned around only to be face to face with another giant toad, this one being pink. Shit. I jumped back then immediately fired the halberd still floating behind me and pierced the creature through the stomach. The toad then fell to the ground but still seemed to be alive, so I picked up the halberd and jabbed it into the creature's head killing it. Note to self, grab an enemy detection skill that's not my passive to find undead and celestials, I then dismissed the halberd back to my gate and continued to survey the field for more toads. There was still another 6 or so toads left, sigh, this may take some time. Half an hour later and 8 toads now dead I walked back to the guild and up to Luna and proceeded to give a report on the quest. 
She seemed relieved I was okay and was impressed I managed to kill 8 toads as fast as I did, I was rewarded 10,000 eras since I completed the mission fairly fast and got the bonus 2,000 eras. After collecting my reward I headed to the bar and decided to grab a meal which consisted of chicken wings, a salad, and some water for about 200 eras. After my meal I asked the bartender where a decent inn was and she told me of an inn nearby which was 2,000 eras for 3 nights for adventures. I thanked her and gave her some extra money so that I didn't have to pay for meals for a time. Essentially a tab of 2,000 eras so I didn't have to buy food for a few weeks. With just under 8,000 eras left I left to buy some clothes, rented a room at the inn for the next few nights and had a bath. Now in my apartment dressed in some black pants with a white shirt I reminisced on this past day. I died in my sleep, brought to a new world as a golden demigod badass, became an adventurer in said world and killed some toads. Pretty good day other than the dying part, my eyes slowly felt heavy and I drifted off the sleep with my last thought being, this is going to be awesome. At the guild hall in Axel. It's been a little over two weeks since arriving to this new world and I've adjusted fairly well I like to think. A decent amount of money has been stored within my gate as well as some more weapons and even small amounts of food which has stayed preserved. But having to do all the easy quests have been getting extremely boring. I can only hunt so many toads and packs of wolves with small rewards for so long. Sure I've leveled up a few more times and have gotten some useful skills and I'm getting better with my gate but even XP is hard to come by now I thought to myself. And you may be asking why I'm not taking higher difficulty quests. It's because until I form a party and take on a few higher level quests I can't take them myself. Again you may ask, but you're strong as hell, shouldn't people flock to you for quests, and you would be correct if it weren't for the fact most of the people here didn't like me too much. It's not that I'm a bad person on the inside but with this body and a slightly altered mindset people don't talk to me too much due to my kingly attitude. Sure I was an introvert in my past life and didn't go out much but this is ridiculous I say to myself as I look down at the table in front of me with a piece of parchment, a quill, and some ink. Now I find myself staring at this paper with a request written on it to form a party with me to take on a quest to explore and clear out an old abandoned castle. A small amount of rage goes through me as I try to calm down my gilitud as I started to call it. After some time I get up from the table and practically slam the request on the quest board and make my way back to my table. I sit down with a huff and start waiting. And waiting. And waiting. And waiting. Damn it. I knew this was a bad idea my scowl grows deeper. It's been two hours of sitting and doing nothing and not a single person had approached me. Hell even a few people caught my eye as they looked at the request then back to me but seemed scared when they reached my gaze. I let out a frustrated sigh as I open up a small gate and grab a small goblet with some wine to calm my nerves. Looking at the goblet I start to think, I despised alcohol with a passion in my old life as Michael to the point where I couldn't eat some variants of pulled pork because it had apple cider in it. And here I am now sipping on some wine to calm my nerves in a fantasy world. After a few sips of wine I heard the clinking of armor approaching my table. Looking up from my wine I noticed a woman standing in front of me. She was very good looking woman putting it mildly. Blonde hair in a ponytail with a small amount of pink at the ends reaching the middle of her back, blue eyes, a black undersuit beneath a set of white armor that had a wing looking pauldron on her right shoulder and an orange slash white dress that the armor was attached to. Almost looks like Artori I quickly say to myself. We stared at each other for a short period until she finally spoke, I saw your request on the board and I personally have been having my eye on the castle quest for some time. She gains a small blush as she says this. I was wondering if you'd accept me into your party. Staring at her for a few seconds which felt a lot longer I finally responded, Ho, oh, you wish to join me? After everyone has refused to match my gaze for more than 5 seconds without cowering like a dog you approach me? I wonder why. My stare intensifies. I couldn't tell if she was flustered or scared but she gained a light blush and responded, WL as I said I've had my eye on the quest for some time but I haven't been able to find a party. I've also heard you're fairly strong and your fighting style is ruthless so I thought it'd be a good idea to try and join you for this quest. I closed my eyes for a moment to contemplate, finally someone approached. I want to accept her right away but I should probably conduct a small interview and see if she's capable my eyes open and my mouth follows, sit, let us discuss details. Yes, she replies and sits down. What are your strengths? I ask. I have a nigh impenetrable defense. What is your class? Crusader, she says proudly. Hmm. Weakness? She gains a light blush at this, W while my defense, strength, and durability are incredibly high my attack isn't near as good, she responds while looking away slightly. 
I squinted slightly at her, she's not lying I can tell but she's not exactly speaking the full truth. But I want to go on this quest to hopefully find an abandoned armory in the castle so I may expand the quantity of weapons in my gate. She said her defense is really high so she's more of a tank than anything which is still fairly useful. Very well, standing up, taking a final sip of my goblet and storing it in my gate. You may come along, the quest is close to two days away so go prepare and meet me at the city gates in 30 minutes and we will depart. Excellent. I'm sure the monsters and undead that will be guarding this castle will be strong and hit hard, she exclaims while standing up and offering her hand to shake. Staring at her hand for a moment I slowly took it and shook her hand, now leave and prepare, I will not wait for you. I will leave at once. She bows and is about to leave before she looks back, my name is Darkness, she says. Gilgamesh, was my short reply as she then ran off to the guild doors. After the now named Darkness left I made my way to Luna and said that I'm taking the quest of clearing out the abandoned castle. Which she proceeds to look at me and sighs, I told you that you need a party of two or more to take this quest, she said sounding just slightly irritated but still maintaining a smile. Hmm. I'll have you know I have recruited a member in my party to go on this quest, a small smirk appears on my face. She seems surprised, oh really? Who? She asks with interest. A crusader named Darkness. Ah, uh, I believe she was eyeing the quest for some time but no one else wanted to go on that quest. She's a good choice and is fairly well liked but she does lack some friends, Luna responds with a smile. After discussing some more details with Luna, I made my exit. 30 minutes later at the city gates. Leaning against the wall with my arms crossed just before the gate I waited for darkness to arrive, she should be here right away, shortly after that thought I noticed darkness running towards me with a backpack which was most likely carrying camping supplies. Gilgamesh. Sorry if I kept you waiting but I'm ready to go. Very well let us depart, I get up from me leaning on the wall and start walking towards the gate. Darkness quickly catches up and soon matches my stride, so are we splitting the reward 50-50? That is the plan. The reward is 200,000 Eris so we will both receive 100,000 inch. Fantastic, she replies as we continue to walk in silence for another hour or so until she speaks again, you asked me my class and such earlier but I never asked what your class and skills are. You wish to know? Yes. Alright currently I am classified as a warlock so I may learn magic as well as some close quarter skills, I respond. I thought you were more of a knight or crusader just judging by your armor. That is what most people believe but I do not require those class skills for now. Also I wanted to ask what those gold portal things you use are. I glance at her and respond, it is my gate of Babylon. Gate of Babylon? She asks seeming confused. It is a place where I can store an infinite amount of treasures, food and weapons which I can shoot from the gate. Wow that's incredible, she beams. I grow a smirk as she is in awe of my awesome gate. Just before I was about to speak my senses picked something up, my detection skill I grabbed is picking something up, seems something like a deer or elk is nearby. I could use some venison in my gate since I haven't restocked on food for a time, would you like to see me use it? She looks at me and responds, sure, but I don't see any enemies or monsters around. I don't respond as I go off the path of the road into the forest and as soon as I reach the trees I stop and notice darkness behind me. I point straight ahead, that will be our dinner tonight, she follows my finger towards a moderate sized elk eating some berries. She looks at me and whispers, a whole elk. How will we transport that? I can lift very heavy things but carrying an elk for a few days will be very tedious, I say nothing as a singular gate opens behind me. The elk seems to sense something is wrong and just as it lifts its head a dagger gets shot into its head at an incredible speed killing it instantly. Darkness makes a small jump as the dagger shoots out and kills the deer in one hit, that is incredible but how will dash, just before she finishes she sees the elk get consumed by another gate. Now let us continue, I speak as I head back to the path in the road. She quickly follows as we continue to walk and make small talk on our way towards the castle. A few hours later. The sun was beginning to set as I looked to darkness, we shall now find a place to camp for the night, let us head into the forest to find a suitable spot, which she agrees with. After five minutes we found a suitable clearing to set up camp. Go look for some firewood and a few stones and I will prepare the elk, she nods and starts to collect some twigs. I could have the gate cook it for me but I haven't cooked in some time and I used to help my mom a lot so I might as well cook something for old time's sake. I don't know how to skin anything so I'll make the gate do that at least and salt it or something. As darkness returns and starts getting the fire ready I hand her a cooking spit of sorts that I can put a pan on top of which she understands my intention and sets it up. 
With the fire now started and the pan slowly heating up with a small amount of oil from the gate as well as a table to prepare on I get started. First I beat some eggs in a bowl and coat two small slabs of venison in a separate bowl with some flour and then coat them in the beat up eggs. Once they were both ready I brought them to the pan and slowly put them in as to not get the oil to splatter as they started to cook. When the edges start to turn a golden brown flip them, I say as I hand darkness some improvised tongs. She nods as I walk back to my station. Cutlets are easy to make and I don't want to make anything too complicated yet since it's just the first night but I may make a stew tomorrow or on the way back from the quest so it will last the trip back to Axel. I think I have some washed lettuce so I'll make a regular salad with oil, vinegar and garlic and I do just that. The salad only took a few minutes to make. Add some lettuce in a bowl with some oil, vinegar and three cloves of garlic finely chopped garlic since my family and I do like our garlic. Good thing I got all these ingredients and food stored in the gate for the past few weeks. Just as I finished the salad darkness came over with the two venison cutlets, which I took and put on some plates. Bringing a small table out I set the table and got her to sit down. We began to eat our dinner in silence. Is it alright? I ask after a few minutes. Yes it is very good, I haven't had venison for a time and what you did with it is nice, she responds. As expected, I say, if our travel goes well tomorrow with no interruptions we should make it to the castle before sundown. We can clear the castle out and set up a space inside for the night then head back to Axel for our reward in the morning. She agrees as we finish our food and I dismiss everything back to my gate. We proceeded to set up our camping gear and by setting up I mean using the gate to prepare a tent and bedroll while she prepared hers. We bid each other good night as we went to sleep for the night. Morning. After we woke early in the morning we packed up and left to make our way to the castle. We didn't really speak to each other on the way there and only took a few small breaks to eat some rations then we would set out shortly after. Good 12 or so hours had passed and it looked to be around 5 o'clock before we made it to the abandoned castle. It looked like your average castle with stone everything but the walls were cracked in some places and some places along the walls were crumbled away or covered in moss. I'm too far away to sense anything and I don't immediately see anything so we probably have to get closer after that thought we approached the castle and slowly opened the massive doors and headed inside. I can sense a few undead so be prepared, once I spoke those words darkness got an excited look on her face as she drew her sword and adopted a combat stance. There were a few straggling skeletons which I made quick work of them by blasting them with swords and other weapons. I couldn't sense any on the upper floors or in the throne room but I could sense undead in the basement. Making our way to the underground slash basement of the castle was when my senses went haywire, there is something of considerable power down here, be prepared for anything. After traversing the underground ways we came across more skeletons and undead knights with darkness only distracting them but before she could hit any I would end them swiftly by blasting them away. And it wasn't until we came across a fairly large steel door that things started to get serious. As we opened the door what greeted us was what seemed to be a knight sitting on a makeshift throne of bones. This knight was massive to say the least. Definitely undead from what my divine sense was telling me. It was covered from head to toe in pitch black armor outlined in gold, a massive black great sword strapped to its back and it had a red cape around its neck. Who dares enter my castle? Speak now or die, the booming voice of the knight echoed across the room. Stepping forward I spoke, we have come to slay all the undead inside this castle, if you do not surrender you will die, I then opened five portals with an assortment of weapons slowly creeping out. The knight let out a booming laugh, ha 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 you can try, but you will die, by my hand, the knight stood from its throne and stared me down. The knight stood over seven feet tall and had an aura of death around it. The knight drew its dark great sword and rushed me. Before I could react darkness leapt in front of me and blocked the attack with her sword. The resulting clash caused a small shockwave and the ground to crack from the force of the blow. You're incredibly strong, said darkness while she and the knight struggled for dominance but you will fall by the hands of this crusader. Before darkness could push back any further a glaive impacted the knight in the chest sending it skidding back a few feet. With the knight dazed she rushed in an attempt to hit it. The knight regained some of its ability to move but was avoiding all her attacks. She could have hit him at least three times by now, thinking to myself as I'm watching the fight. I know she said her offense was lacking and I doubt I could have blocked the attack with a mere sword but how is she missing? Initially, I was impressed by her strength but now she just couldn't hit him and I started to lose my faith in her ability. During their scramble I sent a sword at the knight hitting it again causing it to fall over. Darkness let out a war cry as she went to pierce the knight as it was down, the floor practically exploded as if a small explosive went off scattering dirt and stone everywhere. As the dust started to clear the first thing I saw was Darkness' red face. 
Following where her sword hit I could see a decent sized crater as if a hand grenade went off but the knight still seemed to be alive. You missed. I shout causing darkness face to get even more red, how? She glanced at me and said, when I said my offense was lacking I wasn't lying, my attacks almost never hit their mark. I immediately face palmed and stared at her dead in the eyes, and you didn't think to mention that little bit. The knight now regaining his conscious grabbed his sword that was next to him and it started to glow a deep purple. Before darkness could react she was smacked by the sword sending her into a wall leaving a sizable hole and spider web cracks being formed. Shit, was my only response as I fired off five weapons at the knight but he managed to dodge or block them as he rushed me. As quick as I could I called a sword from my gate and blocked the attack. While your physical strength isn't as great as hers I hope you can serve as a better challenge, said the knight as I was slowly being pushed back. I gained a smirk as I stared at him, I'll be more of a challenge than you have bargained for, straining myself I once again opened up five gates and proceeded to continuously shoot a barrage of weapons at him. The knight jumped back as I rushed him this time. Bringing my sword down upon the knight he just barely managed to deflect the blade. We exchanged a flurry of blows that no average person could watch, it was a whirlwind of blades a truly remarkable battle. Just as I was gaining the upper hand the knight's sword started to glow once more and he managed to swipe the sword from my hand. As he was bringing his blade down ready to strike at my exposed head I used the gate to create two portals. One above my head that brought forth a great sword to block the attack and another portal just behind me, a halberd appearing from within. The knight's glowing sword struck the great sword practically shattering the blade. Leaning back so the blade would strike my armor I took the hit and was sent flying back but just before I was hit I sent out the halberd and it finally pierced the knight's armor and struck him. The blow sent me and the knight backwards crashing into the ground. I slowly climbed to my feet at the same time as the knight and as we made it to our feet he removed the halberd from his chest and threw it to the ground, it dissipating into gold motes of light as it returned to my gate. Wiping some blood from my mouth that appeared after the fall I glared at the knight. That freaking sword of his is insane. It's got to have some magical ability that increases his strength and speed, probably in short bursts though. If only my gate was stronger I could bombard him with more weapons and blow him to pieces. But I need to level up more. You truly are a worthy opponent. No man has touched me in years. That is well deserving of praise, said the knight. I followed that by opening more portals ready to strike once more until I heard something that almost made me faceplant. Oh that was amazing, screamed a voice from my left. It was darkness. She was red-faced and panting like a dog in heat as she approached us. Your strength is amazing. You were probably imagining all the horrible things you could do to me after. You would strip me of my armor and have your way with me, then toss me into one of the prison cells and torture me while making me your sex slave. The knight was now extremely confused, what are you shouting about woman? Why would I do that? Because you are an undead only driven by greed and desire. Oh but I will endure. Now take me, she ends off. And now I will face palm once more. She then rushes to engage the knight again. While she did not hit him she was blocking all of his attacks and her defense was holding expertly. While her attacks are useless she can still hold her own defensively against him which is still impressive thinking I might as well join the fight I ignored the pain running through me and rushed to fight with darkness. With me firing off weapons and landing blows with a sword I was using and darkness taking the majority of the hits we were slowly pushing back the knight. This continued for a moment till the knight and his sword glowed ominously once more and he managed to smack us both sending us flying back but not before I bombarded him with an assortment of weapons sending him back as well. With practically all of darkness armor chipped and cracked and my armor being dented and chipped in a few places with some blood coming from my lip and forehead we were still raring to go. The knight got back up looking pretty bad. After my last barrage his helmet was smashed and torn off with pale grey skin showing, completely pitched black eyes and ashen white hair. The rest of his armor was in a similar state to darkness being cracked, chipped, and pieces completely missing all over showing some chainmail and grey skin underneath. He was on his last legs. Stumbling forward the knight collapsed onto one knee and raised its head showing a rather normal face than one of pure anger and rage. It has been a very long time since I tasted defeat. It has been a long time since I was cursed to guard this castle. Now I ask that you two finish me so I may be free. I suppose I can grant as much, I reply limping forward slightly and grabbing an axe from my gate. When I made it to the knight he only had to raise his head slightly to look at me. I raised the axe and in one swift motion I decapitated the knight. The room was silent for a moment as the knight's body and armor turned to ash leaving only his sword behind.
I picked up the weapon and examined it admiring the craftsmanship before sending it to my gate, and that's my first magical weapon. Darkness then walked over to me, that was truly an amazing battle, the hits I took were amazing, she seemed slightly dazed and red-faced. Don't tell me you enjoyed that. The fight? Missing attacks and getting hit, she seemed to be pouty and the missing attacks part but when I mentioned the getting hit part she blushed. Wait, it started to click, you're a masochist aren't you? WW what oh of course not. Oh my god you are. I start to grin while she pouts and tries to refute, wah ha 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 I bellow out doing a full on gill laugh. What's so funny, she starts yelling getting even more flustered. Ha 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 he he, after a few minutes of laughing like a madman my laughter goes from booming to light chuckles. I haven't laughed that hard in a long time and I certainly needed it, a few more chuckles escape my lips. Anyways it is getting dark so let us find a place to rest. She nods still slightly flustered as we make our way out but on the way out I noticed a room slightly ajar further down the hall. I make my way to the door and when I open it, it turned out to be the armory. Now this is where the golden rule luck comes in, I mutter. Rows upon rows of weapons line the walls as I take them all into my gate. Along with some trinkets and jewels that I promised to split when we made it back to Axel. We searched around upstairs finding multiple rooms not worth mentioning but we did find a kitchen connected to a lounge slash dining area which is where we now resided. After some quick dusting to be able to sit on the many couches we finally relaxed. While you did miss all your attacks your defense was remarkable, it would have taken much more time to beat that undead knight without you, I say to darkness. My magic was running really low with how much I fired the gate so I must get more magic and reduce consumption on the gate. It would be nice to use it with the ease that Gil did in the anime but I must work my way there in true RPG fantasy. You were amazing as well, that gate of yours is extremely useful and your ability with the sword is fairly decent but is massively better compared to my own, she said the last part with a bit of a blush. Humph, of course it is I am the great Gilgamesh after all, I say smugly and proud. She gives a light chuckle in response. Now you must be hungry, she nods. I shall have my gate make dinner now so that we may relax. It can do that. Yes, but I do like to cook on my own sometimes. Do you drink? Yes, but not often, usually just some wine with dinner. Perfect, a gate opens putting two goblets and a metal wine vase. I pour out the wine into the goblets and we raise our cups and clank them together. To a quest complete. To a quest complete, she smiles as we drink some wine. After chatting for a time I brought dinner out from the gate which was a stew made from the venison and leftover vegetables I had in the gate. After chatting and eating dinner, with me making some jokes about her masochism which I couldn't tell if she hated or enjoyed, we went to sleep. But before going to sleep I sent my armor into my gate to be repaired as it should do inside there. Now dressed in a simple white shirt and black pants I drifted to sleep with a smile on my face. When we woke up a little later that morning we had a small breakfast and distributed the points we got for going up a few levels last night and headed home. The walk home was like it was on the way to the castle, like talking with a break every few hours. Two days later. Axel. We arrived back in Axel two days after we left the castle taking a much more leisurely pace. I was now back in my armor which was now fully repaired. We headed back to the guild and went to claim our reward, heading straight to Luna we gave our report. She was happy we made it back and impressed we even killed a death knight. She congratulated us and we received 100,000 eris each. We shared a small lunch together and Darkness left eventually to go repair and strengthen her armor. I offered to fix it for her but she declined and left towards the blacksmith. The rest of the day was just spent relaxing and enjoying the day with some shopping included to replenish my pantry. I ended off the day in my apartment once again and in my regular clothes. Slipping into my bed and staring at the ceiling like I did my first night here I let out a contempt sigh, today was another good day. Thus came the end of another day with my new life in a new world. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.